Why is my doctor wasting precious minutes of our very short time together typing into her computer when she should be talking to me? It must be very important, so I assume that's data about me. Makes sense. But I wonder, where, where is that data going? Is it, is it going into the hard drive there in her office? Is it, is it forward to some server and the medical system that she's working for? Or, or is it residing in some cloud uh, overhead somewhere? Is the government looking at my data? And, and if so, what data is it looking at? And what does it want to do with it? I'll come clean. I'm an emergency physician, and I'm teaching graduate students now how to use technology and medical data to get us to the point where we have optimal health outcomes. That's really been very important to me because I'm unsatisfied with how we're leveraging technology and data today to achieve just that. Incredibly expensive technology that we are using should be helping us to arrive with our doctors at health plans and health journeys that take us to the best health we can have throughout our entire lives. That takes technology and data to optimize that, but we're not really using it well. We each have data strewn around the world depending on where we stopped for medical care, in hospitals, emergency departments, urgy centers, places while we were away on vacation. But do those islands of data merge in any way to make more sense out of, uh, out of our medical condition? Does your doctor have access to those other pieces of data? The answer to that is mostly no. And in fact, I, you know, the, the data is, is huge in those islands, and I believe it's important because I, I have to, because I receive those wonderful little pages after I have a medical encounter that tell me they're explaining my benefits to me. That takes a lot of data to fill those sheets. I'm indebted to one of the mentors I had in medical school for explaining to me how technology actually can help the physician-patient relationship. And, and that was over 40 years ago. Okay, that Steve Jobs had just left his garage. Okay, this was not high tech. When I used to participate in the care of his patients, he showed me that data capture and transparency were all concepts that could be worked into strengthening the physician-patient relationship. I would watch him as he would sit beside his patients, do a brief history and physical exam, hold their arm and discuss with them what he found and what they should do about it and discuss that. And when they were through, he would reach into his pocket and pull out a portable cassette tape recorder. That was high tech. Right? And he would dictate the office visit note in front of the patient and be able to dictate letters to the physicians who referred the patient and any family members who were involved in the care. The patient knew exactly what this doctor knew about them, understood about them, was saying about them to the outside world, and it really strengthened their relationship. His patients loved him. But it really didn't take any more time out of his office visit. And this is 40 years ago. My doctor says she's stressed by typing all this data into her computer. And she's as stressed as I am. And she says that this is not helping care for me in the few minutes she has to see me in my regular office visits. Is this is, is the technology we're currently using and, and the data we currently correct really helping us to get better medical care? Have we gotten anything beyond what my mentor was able to do 40 years ago? Well, the answer is yes, but it's yes, but. It's, it hasn't been able to free the doctor to spend more time with us. It hasn't given the doctor as much information as she needs to make a really best diagnosis and best treatment plan for me. The odds of getting the best care available right now on your visit to your doctor are extraordinarily low. Right? That information is not there. 
there's some good news. I mean, there is an opportunity to take a real leap forward right now. For a couple of thousand years, doctors have been trying to remember everything about you while they're talking to you and making up a treatment plan. It's not an easy task, I can tell you, because we get tired and we forget stuff. And there are 25 more patients in the waiting room to be seen. This isn't a guarantee that you're going to get perfect knowledge impacting what your plan is for your treatment. This is not the optimal situation, but computers don't get tired. Computers remember all this stuff, and they can help the doctor do that. That's really very important, and it's, it's happening a bit today. When you're in the hospital and you need medication, your nurse has to interact with a computer system before he can give you the meds or push the syringe. It's a beautiful dance. The nurse asks you questions like your name and your birth date to make sure that you're the patient who's on your hospital ID band. And then a scan has the computer check to see that the person that is this ID band wants the medications that are on the tray by scanning their package. This is a revolution in medical care because only 20 years ago, we were making medical errors in hospitals at a rate that exceeded 5 to 10% of the time. You didn't get your right medications at the right dose at the right time. So computers have truly moved us on toward eliminating those and giving confidence, especially to me, if I'm in that situation, I'm confident that I'm getting the right medicine and I'm getting a medicine that my doctor prescribed for me and I'm getting a medicine that's compatible with me. That's very important in terms of my care. Right? Because I'm still not sure, with that computer help, whether I'm getting the best care for my condition. I'm not sure that the procedure that he wants to book for me next week is the right procedure for my condition. Because there is an incredible amount of medical knowledge and doctors can't keep up with it. At this point, one new medical article is being published every minute of every day. That's impossible to keep up with. My doctor's lucky if she can get to an annual medical conference and hear a couple of talks on a couple of things that might be relevant to me but that's not anywhere near the kinds of information that needs to be available for her to be able to plan my very best treatment. There's an incredible amount of data that we could be using because the truth is we all visit the doctor one billion times a year in this country. That's a lot of data that could be used to research medical conditions and medical outcomes and medical therapy results that we're not doing as we speak. We could, there are tools out there that can do this. Most of you are aware of Watson, the, med the computer that won on Jeopardy a few years ago. Watson continues to get stronger and has many cousins as well. But Watson can read all of those medical articles. Watson understands them. Watson can also correlate my symptoms and whatever the doctor has found with all of the diagnoses that go with that and give my doctor a list of diagnoses for me that need to be considered and recommended, and it can give treatment plans for all of those, all of those illnesses. That's, that's an amazing improvement over what we're doing today, so why isn't it being done? Well. Watson's a little complicated and a little expensive for my doctor to contract for on her own just to take better care of me, even though I'd like that. Okay. That's a very expensive deal. It's hard. It's outside of the electronic medical record. It's another thing to do for her, and it's way too complicated, way too expensive. There are apps for everything today. There should be apps running in the background that do all this today because the electronic medical system is there it should be running in the background to do things that should help the doctor. Why is she still typing? This doesn't make sense. Well, it does in a way because our hospital electronic medical record systems were built on the backs of billing systems. They are very, very good at identifying everything that was done to you. 
and putting it together in a package that can be sent as a bill to the insurer. That's what they're really good at. They're not very good at optimizing clinical care. That isn't their job. They can track absolutely what drug you get, but if I have any piece of medical data, it might be in one of up to 20 or 30 different places in the medical record, making it very difficult to be able to search and do things effectively to try to get my care to be better and more up to date. Not only that, but my doctor has to look at screens that are very complicated for her, and she's not that kind of visual person. And those screens were very likely the, the favorite icons and the favorite widgets of the engineer who put the system together. Not a physician, not anybody who understood the content material. That's really a problem for us. And then we have some things that are really putting us at the cusp of a change. Voice recognition is exceeding 99% these days. Voice recognition is part of our lives, whether we like it or not. But those, those conversations that I'm having with my doctor in the office can be converted to data. And the computer can write the office note. The computer can write, can write the correspondence. The computer can give Watson my symptoms and what's going on with me and have Watson advise the doctor, recommend what my diagnosis and what my treatment really ought to be, and it can do it on the basis of today's medical articles. Right. Huge difference. And it's not that far off. Your, your smartphone and or your little device at home that plays music for you when you talk is really all that's needed to monitor me while I'm in the exam room with my doctor, and I can get those results. It needs innovative education and a new curriculum. We need folks who understand medicine, who understand computer technology, who understand human cognition, and understand how to get things done in medical organizations. Okay. That's a tall order, but people are already approaching this. There are physicians and nurses and even office managers who are going back to school. You know, they're learning about data capture, and they're learning about strengths and weaknesses of analytic uh, analyses. They're learning about artificial intelligence and natural language processing that should be there to help the doctor take care of us. They speak both technology and medicine. So this marriage of disciplines called healthcare informatics is really able to deliver on the promise that technology and medicine had together of delivering optimal health care for each of us. We're there almost in terms of the technology. The Internet of Things is here. That's all those Wi-Fi and Bluetooth things that talk to the net that are hanging around us in our person or our home or our cars. There are devices today that are interesting. Bathroom scale can not only weigh you and print out a graph of how your weight's gone, that's depressing, <laughs> but can call your doctor and let him know in case your doctor's monitoring your weight because he's worried about rapid fluid retention and congestive heart failure or some other major condition that could be intervened early and keep you out of the hospital. That's here today. There's a refrigerator for sale this year that scans the barcodes on your food and knows what you have in your fridge and knows what you're eating. So today, what do we use it for? We make a shopping list when your food gets low. Okay. Now, there's less than optimal health, okay. Now, there's only just so many Twinkies you can scan. But it is capable of doing things like letting your doctor know that you're drinking a lot of grapefruit juice. And that could be the reason for your bad cholesterol level, because grapefruit juice interferes with the absorption of anti-cholesterol medicine. Would you have known to tell the doctor you're drinking a lot of grapefruit juice? Not necessarily. But the refrigerator knew. The refrigerator could help us. Well, my doctor knows that I take my medications because my pill container knows the weight of every one of my medicines. And it knows when I opened the door and took out exactly that weight of medicine, what time I did it. So it can tell my doctor that I'm complying with the treatment regimen. I took them at the right times, the right days, the right medicines. Wow, you know, that's amazing for folks. And of course, it could call me or text me or do anything it wants if I didn't and tell me that I'm overdue for my medicines. It's a great help for folks who are, of course, a few years older than I am who have trouble with their memory. 
What I am worried about is my dental floss container telling my dentist that I really don't floss as much as I tell him. <laughs> so what benefits are there from this? What does this look like? There's a medical exam room behind me. A patient comes in following up for a biopsy of a hard lump that she had a few days ago and wants to find out what it was and if anything needs to be done about it. And she puts on her Johnny, still embarrassed by the lack of coverage, and sits on the exam table. And a technician comes in and puts a small box on her arm that painlessly gets her respirations and her oxygen and her pulse and her blood pressure and her chemistries from her blood. And the doctor, that wirelessly transfers to the computer, and the doctor comes in and greets her and goes over her exam for that day uh, and then tells her he wishes he had better news. He shows her on his tablet what today is. He swipes to the pathology report and goes over it with her. And then they both sit quietly for a minute while she sobs and he reaches for the Kleenex box. He explains what the latest protocols are from the National Institutes of Health for her problem that Watson found for her based on her labs, her tumor, and her exact genetic makeup. He also showed her the results of current treatments and able to have a full discussion about what she should do next. When she says that she's way too overwhelmed, he asks her if she wants to be seen in a few days, and with a single tap, sends an encrypted message to her home full of hyperlinks to the articles and makes this appointment for her in a few days to come back. He asks her on the way out the door if she's ready yet for him to talk to her partner, but she reassures, he reassures her that he is going to stand by her through this entire treatment course, no matter what. What do we need to do to reach this? This is about using our legislation to drive the incorporation of high tech into medical care. This is about having our legislators use the the billions of federal dollars we spent in the last decade to put a computer in every office, in every hospital, to be able to have these benefits. But it'll take our help. They will not think of it unless they hear our voices. We need to say that optimal health outcomes should be the object of any system they really want to build, and that high-tech integration is the way that we're going to get the best medical care. We're going to get optimal medical care. In the future, our doctor will have assistance with all the diagnosis and treatment, but they'll have more time to be with us in the exam room. And, and isn't that what we're all hoping for? Thank you.